around all the scales. Like coming out of Shree's Court, I just run up Route 29 in the Hope, Arkansas, get around Hope, Arkansas scales. I run right on up uh, 30 there into 40, which is no scales until you get all the way over to uh, Memphis, where you can drop down on the old route, Route 70, and run right around those scales. What's good, my guy? I can't call it. I completely thought about you when I seen that video. I said, oh, my God. I said, I, I said, oh, my God. Oh, no, no, no. We, that was the 80s, baby. That was the 80s. I said, this man said, bump that. I got a low that I'll just put somebody else's company on there, man. What's going on? What? That's right. Was that, was that, that like we, that we, for? No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Just like this load I've got right now. It's hot. It's not, you know, stolen or anything, but it's not going through any company at all. It's going through a certain person and me. It's not, uh, there's going to be no, I don't have any authority to haul that whatsoever. I'm not running, I'll be probably putting somebody else's signs on there. And may, they may think I'm running it, but I'm running it for myself. It's coming from the manufacturer, going right to the cosignee. There's no other truck company involved. Just Moonlight Incorporated. Because <laughs> that's what I'm going to be running when the moon's out. <laughs> yeah, the, night, the night hides a lot of things. Like I say, at night, after 4 o'clock, 4.30, uh, all your DOT, your ICC, or your Public Service Commission, they've only gone home. might run that up until midnight. I can tell you scales in, all over the country that uh, Tennessee, especially, you pull in there and, you, and you're independent. There's no questions about it. You automatically go around back for an inspection. And if you're behind in your logs, it's going to cost you $40. If you're behind very best, it's going to cost you $55. If you don't have a spare tire chain in, it's going to cost you $40. And I've heard even instances where if they can't, if your truck's perfect, they'll, they'll crawl on your truck and get you, find you forty dollars for an unsanitary bunk because your bunk wasn't made. So I, I, I just run around all the scales, like coming out of Shree's Court. I just run up Route 29 in the Hope, Arkansas. Get around Hope, Arkansas scales. I run right on up uh, 30 there into 40, which is no scales until you get all the way over to uh, Memphis, where you can drop down on the old route, Route 70, and run right around those scales. Oh, the DOT's in a darn scale. The 24-hour deal, I ain't never heard that in Arkansas. Here we go. Oh, I just got a big knot in my stomach. Don't go in, I feel like I'm gonna get nailed. That's a hell of a feeling. Put the hammer down through here. The faster we get through here, the better. Really get a ticket for speed is to get one word. Here are the scales. Look at that, big as life, man. So far, so good. Once we get them city limits, there ain't no way they're gonna turn me back. For real? We used to have, What's that? We, yeah, we used to have, we used to have magnetic uh, placards. We used to have magnetic placards with fake names on them. Like a, it would be a J.B. Hunt placard. Just magnetize it to the truck. Oh yeah, we used to do that. So outlaw trucking at his finest back in the back in the seventies yeah. and eighties. Early nineties too. They didn't switch until the CDL came in. So that when that CDL, that was when CDL when when CDL came in, I think it was like ninety five or some shit like that. That's when trucking that's when the trucking industry took a shit. It ain't been shit since. Wow. So that all the fun left. <laughs> you said all the fun left. Yeah, yeah, all the fun left. I mean, listen, it was us against the DOT back then. 
it was it wasn't all regulated the way it is now. It wasn't all these pansy ass uh, uh, drivers out here. It wasn't all these female drivers out here taking up the middle lane. It was you never even saw a truck in the middle lane. And back then it was only remember it was only two lane, three lane. So if you got in the middle lane, you got ran off the road. The law of the road is stay to the right except for passing. When we coming through at night, give up that middle lane and left lane, let us through. So, yeah, it, it ain't the same, man. I was just, it's funny you talking about it. I was talking to uh, someone yesterday. Baby, let me take you. And, uh, they were asking me about my younger days of driving. And I said, it's funny how I remember when the late 70s, when I was a kid driving, and Joe Biden said, trucking. Good, man. Uh, double espresso macchiato with extra foam? Sure, that'll be 450. Thanks, man. Was an unskilled labor job. You there? Yeah, Joe Biden said that trucking was an unskilled labor job. And I was telling the guy yesterday, I said, well, if we was unskilled, we're driving 13 to get there, 15 speed, 18 speed, 22, 24 speed, double over, three sticks, two sticks. Everybody had something to do in the truck. That took skills. Not only are you getting some getting some somewhere to go? You're doing it on two three hours of sleep, and that's for the whole week. You're turning three thousand miles in three to four days as a solo driver. Whatever drugs or toothpicks you use to keep your groove going, we did it. Now, we got shit done. We got paid. We got our money. No questions asked. If a if a manufacturer say, hey, can you get this to X, Y, Z by morning, this cash is yours halfway here. When you get to the other end, the, the, the receiver going to pay the other half. That, that free had to go. Now, here it is, 2023, and I agree with Joe Biden. Because today's drivers are unskilled laborers. They dumbed this industry down so fucking much that I agree with him. It's unskilled. They can't drive a stick. They don't know how to snort cocaine. They don't got no women in different truck stops that they can come pick them up, wash their clothes, clean the truck, get all the good stuff done, get your tubes cleaned out, and sing you on your merry way. This is this is true now. It's unskilled labor. Automatic trucks. Computerized trucks, cameras in the truck, backup cameras, beepers on the truck, all this goofy shit that they dumbed it down to the tenth of a newborn. Unskilled labor, bro. It, it, my baby, my baby boy, can drive a truck on the road, and nobody know it's a fucking two-year-old behind the wheel. Well, old school driver. They they say they want to make they mo they want to make the roads safer. So with all of the uh technology that they put in trust today, they it's it's all for safety, right? Well let me ask you a question. If it was to make it safer, then why they have more accidents between ninety five and present than they did from ninety five to the beginning mm, good question they've had more accidents since the cdl came in when they switched us from having an articulated license to a commercial driver's license there's been more accidents and more deaths to drivers more property tore up and within the last 10 years it's even been higher 
you new guys came in in the last 10 years that had more accidents than we had our whole career. So how did they make it safer? They 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 gave y'all driver's license out of the, the cornflake box. You ripped open the Cracker Jack box, ripped open the pack, and there was your license. We literally had to work for ours. We had to take a real road test, real backing up. We had to really go through some shit. You guys go a couple of hours into a school, pay these fucking jokers X amount of dollars, and it looks like you passed. And then they say, we're going out there. The next thing you know, there goes the telephone pole on the corner. There goes the fire hydrant. There goes the me- you know why they took the mailboxes off the corners, right? I thought they was going digital. No, because you new drivers in the last 10 years was tearing the, the government uh, mailboxes up. So they took them up. So Moonlight Trucking is the new billion oh, yeah. dollar trucking oh, company. Yeah. Moonlight oh, yeah. Trucking. Well, Moonlight is just a phrase. That's not the actual name of his company. That was a phrase we used. Moonlight Trucking. That means, that means from sun up to sundown or sundown to sun up. Once you can see the crescent of the the the, the crank of the moon, that'll be around four thirty five o'clock. Time to ride. Man, back in the day, it's, it seems like you guys had some fun back in the days, man. We did, we did. Lockout. I was thirteen. I was 13 years old driving a cab over um, Transtar, International Transtar. And I would leave from a, a, a Rawway, New Jersey. It was called Inman, New Jersey, Rawway, New Jersey. Go to the Bayway Circle in Elizabeth, New Jersey, over the Gothels Bridge into Procter & Gamble and Colgate Palmolive. Drop my dad's trailer. Hook up to the loaded trailer, was, which was about 35 to 45,000 pounds. Drag it back over the Gothel's Bridge, back around the circle, down Route 1 and 9, and back into my dad's yard. Drop that off, grab another empty, and go do it again. I was 13 years old. Oh, hey, man. You remember me? Uh... Why don't you make me a double espresso... Macchiato with extra foam. You got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't you make it like your life depends on it? Ooh. Well, it's funny. I had my first uh my first full uh truck inspection about a week ago. And it's also funny that after watching this documentary and and, and the guy was talking about how the scale houses are closed between the hours of what he said. But it's crazy because I was coming up into Minnesota, uh, I'd say maybe around, I don't know, midnight, maybe about one o'clock. And the scale house was still open, bro. Wow. Let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this, man. Uh, I, I know back in the day, it, it, it was easy getting around scale houses well, y'all probably take those small back roads just to just to avoid them mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but modern times now can 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 you guys or can us drivers still be able to avoid scale houses if we could yeah we do it all the time <laughs> We, we, you got to remember, we run heavy all day long. So we still avoid scales. All right. Now, the reason, the problem is your generation don't use CB radios. My generation, we, the CB radio was our friend. So we knew if the scale was open. Why? Because somebody who came that way gave us the 10 one one on it. And they would say, hey, southbound, scale's open, chicken coop's open. We got, we got one, got a bear in there and he hungry. We knew to get off, shut the lights down, hit the back roads. That's when your trailer lights and your your headlights were separate. 
So you could shut down your trailer light and just run your tail lights, uh, your, your tractor lights, which would just be your headlights, not the top lights. Everything was shut down except your headlights. So we knew to go. So we had communication. Trucking was a family. It was a communication. So we knew each other over the CB radio. Everybody had a handle. You saw the same people within the week in and week out. So if you ran California across 80 over down and dropped down to 40 or you ran across 10 and 20, you saw the same drivers. If you ran 95, 85, you saw the same drivers. So everybody knew everybody. So we communicated. So, yeah, you can get around the scales. It was no problem taking them back roads. Y'all can't drive on them back roads. Y'all jokers scared to death to go back there. And we talking a two-lane where cars is coming in one and you got to go down the other. You jokers get back there, and next thing you know, you're in the middle of the cornfield. And Lord, don't let it be no snow back there. Y'all definitely messed it all up for everybody. But see, the, cop, the, 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 the DOT used to get slick every once in a while. They would do what we call portables. They would wait back there and catch us and, and, and pull out the portables. You, they, you had to pull up on the airbags. Do you agree with this statement that uh, that nowadays new drivers – uh, can't even read a map well, or a road atlas can't. to even to to even avoid the scales. They they, bro, don't even worry about avoiding the scale. Tell them to read what the front cover says. How can they open the book to any state and read a grid coordinates when they don't know how to read a map? Period. And we ain't even talking about ducking those scales. We just talking about I tell you what you do, Locke. Get a, I'm I'm pretty sure by now you have an atlas just for the hell of it, because you see like the type of guy who who would do that. So walk in, take your camera, take your your video, take your your podcast, and I bet you a dollar for every person you stop out of ten, nine gonna not know how to do it. Maybe one may know how to open it up and say. Uh, uh, Rand McNally. Then give him a grid coordinates. What you want to do is tell him, we're going to start here and I need you to get me to, and you pick a town. And I bet you it doesn't happen because they don't know how. They don't know the difference between latitude and longitude. So how are they going to do anything for you, bro? They don't even know north, east, south, or west. These days of of new jack truckers, they're not even being taught how to use a map. I mean, when I like when I came into U.S. Express, we had to do a test on on mapping. Uh, when I went to trucking school, we we was taught how to read a map, and even when I went to J and R Schwugel, uh, we had to do uh, a map test as well. We had to know how to read a map. But later down in later down the line and in years down the line, you don't even hear new jack truck drivers even talking about uh being taught how to read a map or anything like that as far as school goes. Luckily for me, my my automotor uh Tri C Trucking Academy uh in Cleveland they still teach you how to read a map i mean they they got they got the the map or the us map they got the Rand McNally books that they pass out and they 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 teach their drivers how to properly read a map but what technology is today kind of made the map book obsolete i mean i i may be Put wrong down. i i, I may down. be wrong in Put saying down. that they still in, they still they still in the stores just like log books are still in the stores you know why because they're legal that's why you can go in any truck stop and pick up a log book if it was uh mandated what you think what you people think mandation means law but it doesn't just means they're asking you to do something you can go any truck stop and pick up a log book you go any truck stop and buy a map. 
You can go to any rest area and ask them for a map, and they're going to give you one. Technology is good for the weak. But let me ask you a question, Lockout. What happens if technology goes down? What if there's a glitch in the system and your, your electronics go out? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. <laughs> I've been what saying, get, I, I've been saying what, that for years, get, sir. I, what I, if you get hacked? <laughs> They're making all this electronics, right? You got electronic truck, your, your GPS is hooked to your truck. Your EDL, e, what, ELD is hooked to the truck. All that's going through Wi-Fi and, and, and uh, Bluetooth, right? Yep. What if you get hacked? They shut your truck down, shut all your communications down. You can't call 911 for help because all your electronics are shut down. Now your truck is sitting in the middle of the highway, shut down because somebody hacked you. Now, here come the pirates. They coming out to rob you. They get ready to blow, either blow your head off or throw you on the ground and take the truck. You know, that's where y'all headed with all this technology. Y'all headed down a very dangerous route. See, some of us old school drivers, which we are called truckers, we still talk on the CB radio. We pass each other. We know how to give light signals across the highway to one another. We know that how to flicker the lights to let you know because we can read our codes. It's like Morris code. If I see somebody coming eastbound, I'm going west, and he's doing the flicker the right way, I know there's a cop somewhere down there. So I know to back the hell out of it. I know when we we traveling, like you guys, y'all – Flick your high beams to tell somebody to come over. That's not how you tell somebody to come over. You shut your lights off and turn them back on. That means you're safe to come over. If you flick your high beams at somebody, that means you're too close. That means you're too close. Where did you guys get this flick your high beams at somebody to come over? So y'all headed down the wrong, I mean, it sounds good. They're going to make trucking safe. Yeah, make it safe. Let's see what happens when the pirates come get you. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Ooh, trucking was trucking back in back in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Mm. Yeah, go, listen, I come from the very beginning of trucking. My grandfather, my dad, myself, and now my sons. That's 105 years of trucking, and we have all of it in our family. So that's why I'm so adamant and, and, and hostile the way I am, because this is something we grew up doing. This, this is something, when we say family tradition, this is a family tradition. You guys jumped in it on some bullshit. I remember telling people when I first started, you know, coming out and letting people know who I was and all that stuff, you jokers got in the trucking, but before you got in the trucking, y'all used to hate trucks. Oh my God, these goddamn trucks are all in the way. I wish they, oh my God, these trucks off the road, they ain't my way. I hate trucks. And them same people that said that is the ones dying to get in one now. How did you hate trucks 10 years ago, but now all of a sudden, you want to be in the truck. Help me understand that, Lockout. And on that note, we're going to end it right there, bro. As always, okay. man. Always beautiful Been a conversation. pleasure with a double measure, buddy. As always, bro. We'll get back at it if I come across something. Rock the bell. LL.